Today we're talking about the five critical systems you need to know to scale your agency. If you want to know the pre-work you need to do before you even get started, the five foundational pieces, and also the biggest mistakes you want to avoid, keep on watching. That's what we're doing on the show today. You better step into the light, just give it a try. Think that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. All right, don't forget to take a moment, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell over on YouTube. Every week, we bring you amazing content to help you grow your travel business, and I don't want you to miss a thing. This week, we are talking to all of you aspiring agency owners or younger agency owners, not younger age-wise, but like, you know, just getting started agency owners. But we're covering all the deets on the important things you need to know and really understand before you are going to scale a business and really grow a team. That's an important thing, right? If you're new to the channel, type a little I'm new. I'd love to welcome you to our community. And if you are new, you might not know who I am. My name is Cindy Williams. I am the CEO and founder of Wanderlust Campus. You can find all of our information at travelschool.com. We have all different types of train educational programs, training, resources. Some of them are free, so you can grab all of those. And our programs are amazing for those of you that are really invested in growing quickly. And today we're talking about scaling your business. So we're talking to those agency owners. So this would be our Wanderlust CEO program. If you're thinking about that, check it out. But let's get into the content today and really give you the things to think about before you get started, right? So I want to start by saying I have seen over the years a lot of people get really excited about wanting to grow a team or maybe this has happened to you. You started to be a travel agent and your friends or family and they're like, I want to do that. Can I come do it with you? And you started thinking, well, maybe I can grow my team right now. Let me just figure it out as I go. That's mistake number one. You want to make sure that you know some of the things we're going to talk about today before you get started. So I know you're excited. I'm excited for you too. And I promise this is really a, a fun venture to do, but you just want to do a few things first to make sure that you're set up for success and also the people that you're about to support, that you're doing them justice because they're going to be coming to you as the owner, as the CEO. And so you're stepping into a new role when you're kind of changing functions from salesperson and moving into that CEO role. So let's talk about the pre-work. That's what you want to make sure that you do first. So I have a little list prepared for us. A couple of things to think about. One, operations. Is your house in order? Do you know uh, what you're doing, right? Do you, Is your business running like a well-oiled machine? You want to make sure you have really documented your processes, how to do things in your agency, how you want things to run. You know, how does it happen from A to B? Also, are you set up as your own agency? If you are hosting under someone else, I do not recommend that you host under a host because your profit margins are gonna shrink down and you're not gonna have the money that you really need to put into things like marketing to drive leads or to do things for your team that you're going to wanna do. So you also wanna ask yourself a question, is it time to first go independent then get set up as your own agency before you start to scale your business. So that could be a much deeper conversation. I could create a whole video on that. Um, but I want to just plant that little seed to think about that because if you have to pay your host 10 or 20% off the top, that's coming right off of your margins. You would have to really charge the people that work for you an amount that's not going to feel really good for them or for you in order for it to be a profitable venture. Otherwise, you might just want to just stick with being a great agent if you're happy with your host and kind of uh, staying in that space until you're ready to branch out and be independent. So that's part of the pre-work too. Um, secondly is what are your goals for your agency? I have so many people that jump in and say, well, just grow it as I go. And while that's nice, I, you can't really get to the finish line until you know where you're going. So I really challenge when I'm working with clients and they're in our Wanderlust CEO program, the first thing I say is, do you want to be a boutique agency? Do you want to be a mid-size agency to a large agency? Where, so boutique would be kind of what I would consider under 25. Um, and then you get into your mid-size agencies, which would be you know anywhere from 30 to 100, 150 agents. A large agency would be like 150 to around 500 agents. And then over 500, I would consider that kind of a mega agency um, where you're really getting into those, you know, the point where you're going to have hundreds or potentially even thousands of agents that are working as you scale your business. You can kind of see the different steps as you go. 
And if you want to be, you know, a mega agency, you're still going to have to work through the other ones. You don't just snap your fingers and have thousands of agents. But I want you to know what do you want for your life. And I will tell you, a mega agency is not right for everyone. That sounds like, oh, I'll maybe be making all this money if I have thousands of agents. But when you get to a point in your agency, and a lot of times with my clients, they'll come in and go, I want a mega agency. But then halfway through, they'll go, you know what? I really want work-life balance. I'm fine with having 100. I'm fine with having 200 or whatever the case is. And some love having a boutique agency where it's just 10 amazing rock star agents. And think about it like this. If you have 10 agents selling a million dollars, you're still a $10 million agency under that scenario. So you can still have a very successful um, venture and keep it small and keep it boutique. This is why you need to think about these things because it's a, it's a really, what do you want for your life in terms of the demands on your time and how you want that to balance out and what your big vision is. Everybody's vision's different and that's cool, but you wanna really decide. And so spend some time thinking about what's right for you. The last thing you want to make sure you understand in this pre, pre-work pre phase is you are moving away from being the top salesperson in your business. If you are going to venture to scale your business and bring on team members or bring on outside parties to help you grow your business, your role is no longer being the best salesperson in the company. Your role becomes in a support function and you're really a CEO at that point. How do I support people in what they're going to do? And so you're going to be supporting your new team, the new people that are working for you. They're going to depend on you to do that. So you need to understand there's going to be a shift in how you spend your time. So being really cognizant about that from the beginning is all in the pre-work stage. All right, let's get into the five foundational pieces. And I'm actually going to do these in the order that I recommend you think about them in. Um, So I've done videos like this on the past, like the five things to have, but today I really ordered it in, you know, how you want to think about it. So we've done our pre-work at this point, hopefully. The next thing you want to think about is how am I going to make training available for my ICs, for my independent contractors. And notice my very (laughs) measured words. How am I going to make training available? You cannot require training. These are contractors. So you need to be familiar with contractor law, how that works. You cannot force anyone, require training, demand that they do training. That's not allowed if you're going to set up in the traditional setup, which is hiring contractors. There's great reasons for setting up, uh, you know, the contractor structure, which is why our industry, really that's the kind of the baseline of what everyone does in this business because it's commission-based type role. Um, But there's some rules you have to follow as a new agency owner that's scaling, right? So you can't require training. And this always, for my newer agency owners, is a tough one when you start hiring people and you're like, why aren't they doing the work to learn? Because I'm going to tell you the secret. They're not you. (laughs) There's a reason why you want to be a CEO. There's a reason why you want to be an agency owner. And there will be a point where you go, oh my gosh, they're not as motivated as I was. Or they're not putting the pieces together. They maybe don't have that that kind of (laughs) go-getter-ness that you might have as an agency owner. It doesn't mean they can't learn. It doesn't mean they don't want to learn. But some people require more structured direction, mentoring, and coaching. Okay? So you want to think about that. What is what are you going to make available to them um, as options? How are you going to encourage them to do the training uh, that you're going to have available for them? Um, So just think about that. And also there are third party solutions out there with our Wanderlust CEOs, for example, that do our year long program. We train their people for them. So they're not forcing them to go through training, but they make our training program available to them, which is a great match because we obviously have a great reputation in the industry for training travel professionals, but it also takes that whole burden of building your own training program off of your shoulders. But if you are going to build your own, you need, it's going to be like a six month build time. Trust me, that's what I do for a living. We build training programs. I've been doing it for 30 years. So you have to make sure you're going to have a good process for how are you going to build the program? How are you going to maintain the program? How are you going to make it available, but not necessarily a requirement, right? So think about that in the training, which is the critical function number one. Second critical function is recruiting. Now, the reason I want you to think about recruiting right now is because I want you to have a recruiting plan. You don't want to just go, I'll just see how it goes. I'll just hire my friend and then I'll hire my sister and then maybe I'll, you know, create an ad or whatever the case is. When you create a real recruiting plan, 
it's going to be based off of that goal that you did in your pre-work. If I want a boutique agency and I want to get to 10 agents, how many do I need to hire this year to get towards to get as far as towards that goals I want to, to be? Do you want to try to get all 10? Do you want to hire five? If you're a mid-size agency, you might be hiring 10 to 15 to 20 a month. And then you would do a process that I call batch hiring. That's a system that we created that we also teach in our programs. I'll share it with you right now though. What it means is you would hire groups of five or potentially even 10 people at a time. So you're doing the functions of onboarding them at the same time. So the reason you want to think about that is if you're going to be doing batch hiring and recruiting, you would have classes on a certain date. And then once your date is set, you need to back it up and have a recruiting period of anywhere from three to five weeks where you are actively recruiting people to fill that class that you're going to do. So think about what your rec recruiting plan is going to be. That should be based on the size agency that you want to have and how far you want to grow this year. All right, number three is going to be hiring. Don't just say, hey, do you want a job and you know, do you want to interview tomorrow? You need to think about what is your hiring process? How are you going to ask people to apply? How are you going to pre-screen them? What interview questions are you going to ask? And also with interview questions, there can be some legalities around that. You want to make sure that you know those and that you're asking the same interview questions to the people that you're interviewing for these contractor positions. So think about what that whole process feels like. If you hire someone, what is the acceptance? acceptance letter. If you don't hire them, do you send them a nice thank you for applying? You know, all those little pieces that come in that hiring box you want to think about. Then once they're hired, what is the paperwork trail you are going to have to start? Which brings me to my next one, and that is number four, the onboarding process. Once you say, congratulations, you're hired. Okay, what then? Do they need to decide, a, do they need to do a background check? Are you, what's the paperwork that they have to fill out? Do you have a hiring contract for them? What are the terms and conditions that you're going to outline? Have you thought about compensation, right? There's a lot of little things that you want to think about. I hope I'm not overwhelming you. I'm really excited about this, the process of helping people grow their agencies. And there's a lot of little steps, but that's why, as you can see, you don't want to just hire one Hire two, you want to think about these things ahead of time and make sure you have a good understanding because the worst thing that can happen is you hire your first 15 or 20 people and then you come to come to us or then you come to a realization that you did a few things that you want to change and you have to change it for everybody and then they lose confidence a little bit in how you're running your business. So if you think about them ahead of time, it will just put you in the best position to do the right thing by your people and also to be a really thoughtful leader. Um, number five is going to be performance management, right? We've hired them, we've trained them, we've recruited them, we've onboarded them. What are we going to do once they're, once they're past that point? This is the one that a lot of agency owners forget about, but you need to have a real system around performance management. What is your company culture going to look like, feel like? What are you going to do to coach people, to set goals, to help them, to mentor them? What is that ongoing process look going to look like? And this is so important that you put time and attention in this area, not just when they're in that first 60 to 90 days when they're kind of new, but what does it feel like to be part of your agency after that? If you get this part right, you will not have company-wide huge attrition numbers. You don't want to hire people just to lose them. You want to do the right things in this category to make sure that they're staying with you long term. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. I want to share just a few ways that Wanderlust Campus can help you. In fact, this is actually the last year I am going to be running our Wanderlust CEO program uh, for the year long term. What that means is when hosts uh, work with us and with small agencies, medium sized agencies, large agencies work with us, they come to us and we become your educational partner. So we work with you uh, over kind of like a year long process and we actually train your people for them. So as your educational partner, we already have all of the systems and training built. So literally if you hire 10 people tomorrow, you can click a button and you're able to uh, really grant them access to our training programs that help them get started in the industry. So obviously that helps you scale a little bit faster because you're not having to create the program. And also we're doing the heavy lifting of actually getting them to the point of not understanding how to be a travel agent to how to be a travel agent, right? Um, and then we work with you as the CEO. You as a CEO would work with me and my team of experts 
and all of our instructors in Wanderlust Campus. You can go to live classes, you have private coaching, but we work with you as a CEO on getting these five big systems in place. We already have an award-winning curriculum in place that teaches you all of the detailed steps to do each of these five with checklists and all that good stuff. And then you get the on-demand support of working with uh, your coach showing up to our live classes and then our uh, support group that we run Monday through Friday where you can ask questions, all the questions that you want for an entire year as you are getting these things in action, troubleshooting and scaling your team. So those are all the different fun things that we do. And of course, we have lots of perks in Wanderlust Campus, our booking academy, our uh, tracking tools, a bun the whole suite of tools for our Wanderlust CEOs. But this is, uh, I've been running this program for, ah, I think, yeah, four years. This is the fourth year. We launched it in 2020. Um, but we're getting so busy at Wanderlust Campus. But we're going to, we're committing to this last term of a year long program for our Wanderlust CEOs. So if you are interested, please do not wait. This is the last week you can enroll to get in. And it will run from March of this year to March of next year. And you can learn a little bit more about that by going to wanderlustceo.com slash start. Uh, there's the link there. I will also pop it down below uh, for any of you experienced agents or agency owners that know you need this stuff. We can help you with that. And even if you take a different path, I wish you so much love, so much abundance. I hope you picked up some good nuggets today and we'll see you guys out there in the world. Bye guys. Have a great week. Hey guys, Cindy Williams here. If you like that last video, make sure you check out all of the other content on our channel. And if you want to follow along and travel with me around the world and see how I run my amazing travel brands and get some great tips on how to grow your own, make sure you check out that other content. I'm going to drop a couple videos here. Click those links. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.